Hello, good day. I hope you are well. In most important business decisions, there are two key financial considerations, risk and return. When we invest, we defer current consumption in order to add to our wealth so that we can consume more in the future. Therefore, when we talk about a return on investment, we are concerned with the change in wealth resulting from this investment. Can risk and return be measured? How to do it? The objective of this video is to help students understand the meaning and fundamentals of risk and return. At the end of this learning session, students will be able to measure return and risk. Stay tuned and let's learn together. This video is divided into two sections. The first section is on measuring return. Let's start. What is return? Return is the total gain or loss experienced by an investment over a given period of time. This slide calls the definition of return by Van Horn. Read the definition and tell me, how many types of return are there? There are two types of returns, income and change in market price. Examples of income are dividend from common stock, coupon interest from bond, and rental from property investment. Change in market price can be positive or negative. Depends on whether the market price has increased or decreased from its initial value. Return is usually expressed as a percentage of the beginning market price of the investment. Next, we are going to learn three common measures of return. The period during which you own an investment is called its holding period. Holding period return is the rate of return over a given period. You may calculate the holding period return with any of the two formula. I find the second formula faster in calculation. The formula considers the change in value of investment from the beginning to the ending of the period. Holding period can be more than or less than a year. The annual holding period return is found by the following formula. N represents the number of years the investment is held. There are three examples here. The purpose of this exercise is to calculate the holding period return for holding period of 1 year, 2 year, and 6 months. For question 2 and question 3, calculate the annualized holding period return too. Please try on your own first. Then you compare your working with the given answers. Happy trying! The arithmetic return for one asset and one period consists of change in price and income. The total return is compared with the initial price to obtain the percentage rate of return. Let's try this example. Using the formula, the answer is 30%. The arithmetic returns for one asset and many periods is a simple average of the yearly return. It is the sum of the annual returns divided by the number of years. The geometric return is the compound annual rate of return. It is the end root of the product of the holding period returns for n years. Let's learn through this example. Calculate the arithmetic return and geometric return. First, I calculate the annual return for each year. For example, for year 2003, 
the annual return is the change in price which is 120 minus 100 the change is in price is 20 plus dividend of 10 divided by the price at the beginning of the year we shall repeat the calculation for the rest of the year to calculate the arithmetic return I sum up the four annual returns here and divide by four. Arithmetic return is the average return for the four annual returns. To calculate the geometric return, I add one to the annual return. For example, 0 0.3 plus one is 1.3. We shall repeat the process for the rest of the annual return by adding one. Next, I multiply all the values here. Then power of 1 per 4 followed by minus 1. The geometric return is 21.96%. Now we are moving to the second section of the video. We are going to learn how to measure risk. Stay tuned. What is risk? Risk is defined by Webster Dictionary as a hazard, a peril, or exposure to loss or injury. Thus, risk refers to the chance that some unfavorable event will occur. In finance, risk is the variability of returns from those that are expected. It is a measure of uncertainty surrounding the return of an investment will earn. Investments whose returns are more uncertain are generally viewed as being riskier. Risk plays a key role in the decision-making processes of both investors and companies. So, it is important that the risk associated with an investment can be quantified. The risk of an asset can be measured quantitatively by using statistics. The most common statistic measure used to describe an investment risk is its variance and standard deviation. Variance and standard deviation are measure of how actual values differ from the expected values for a given series of values. Let me ask you a question. Which firm has higher risk? Why? The answer is firm Y. This is because firm Y has a wider dispersion from the expected return of 15%. The higher the standard deviation, the higher the risk. The expected return is the average return that an investment is expected to produce over time. We can use mean historical return as proxy for expected returns. Both variance and standard deviation are measure of risk or variability. Variance is the dispersion or the distance from any point in the data set to the center. Variance is a measure of how actual values differ from the expected values. Variance is a square deviation from the expected return. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Standard deviation reduces the variance to the same unit as the original data set. Let's look into an example. There are two stocks in this example. HSBC and Vodafone. The price and arithmetic returns are given. Calculate the variance and standard deviation. Let's try on your own first using the formula given in the previous slide. Happy trying! I'm going to show you how to calculate variance and standard deviation. We shall practice how to use this formula the formula of variance. First, I calculate the expected return of the stock. 
I add all the arithmetic returns of HSBC together and obtain a value of 0 0.081. Next, I divide this value with 12 as there are 12 data in the sample. The expected return of HSBC is 0 0.007. We can perform the same calculation for Veda Font 2. Next, based on the formula, I'm going to use the data x here, here, the data x to minus the expected return, which is here. I'm going to square the value and do it one by one for the rest of the value. Then we sum the value together based on the formula. We divide the summation with 11, which is n minus 1. This value represents the variance. Finally, we calculate the standard deviation which is the square root of variance. Finally, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you have learned some knowledge from this video. If you like this video, please click like, share or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you, see you and goodbye.